Here's another quick and dirty uh, Inkscape screencast. This one's going to be uh, involving just a quick kind of reflected text effect uh, that you'll see all over the place uh, usually. And it's very easy to create in Inkscape. Um, so I'll just show it to you quickly here. First thing I'm going to do is um, create a rectangle. I'll click on the rectangle tool. This is my background. Um, obviously <laughs> I don't want that color as my background, so I'll hit um, F1 to get it selected. I'll hit Control shift f to bring up the Fill and Stroke dialog box, and I will change the background to, just drag it here, to black. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is create some text. So I hit the text button, go out here, click, and you'll see that flashing cursor. Now I'm going to type something, you're not going to see it because it's black as well. So what you do is just finish what you're typing, hit F1, you'll make it bigger if you want, and then go over to the re to your fill and stroke dialog box while that's selected and now we can change the font color to whatever we want. I'm going to change it to that bright annoying cyan color. Um, and then what I'm going to do is change the font. I'm not crazy about this font. I want something a little chunkier for this uh, demonstration. So while it's selected, I'm going to hit Control shift t to bring up this big, huge dialog box here that I will drag in so you can see. Um, let's see if I can get the buttons up here. Yeah. So right now it's uh, this font here. Um, I'm going to change the font to this one. It's a nice chunky font. I'm going to hit apply and close the dialog box. Now I have, sorry, grabbed the wrong thing, big chunky font here. Again, I'm going to scale this up and I can do that just by selecting the object, hold, highlighting this corner arrow and, and dragging. Now if I if I just drag, I can do whatever I want to the font. If I want to keep the same kind of aspect ratio between width and height, I'm going to hold control, the control key while I drag. So now I'm going to drag this fairly large, bring it over where I want it. Now, what I'm going to do here is that mirrored effect. So what I want to do is duplicate this object. I do that by holding control, hitting the D key. Now I actually have two objects here one of them is selected. I'm going to click this button that says flip selected objects vertically and now you see there's a flipped object there. I click and drag and you can see I have the reflected object. Now I'm just dragging around here. If I hold control key again it's going to restrain the movement of it so I want to bring it down vertically just below my original. If I want to go in and check you know that those meet up properly. I can hold control key and use the mouse um, scroll wheel to uh, make some finer adjustments to that. Okay, and I'll zoom out. That's approximately what I want. So now to get that kind of more realistic mirrored effect, if I select that bottom area and select this gradient button, I can just kind of drag a gradient that will create that. It goes from opaque to transparent and I can you know, get the look I want just by adjusting these points. Again, if you want the gradient to be vertical while you're dragging these, hold control and that will restrain it in certain directions. So that probably looks reasonable. There I have my reflected text. Very quick and easy. Now, another thing I'll show you quickly is if I have one object here and I want to, you know, I can hold shift and select the second object and I can move them now kind of in one motion. So what I'm going to do is actually group them so that they'll be one object that I can grab. I don't have to hit shift in the second one again. So what I'll do is select them both and hit this button. Group selected objects and now you can see it's one whole object. And so by selecting, you know, clicking once, then clicking again, I can do things like rotate 
these to you know, maybe a different angle. Or, more interesting, I can hit this kind of skew grip here and move it up this way. Now again, if I hit the control key, I get increments of skew. So I'm just going to go to this point, and you get kind of a 3D effect. Okay, and again, because it's all vector-based, you can go in and actually see there's very good resolution. I can export this whole thing, uh, or just that part, um, to a bitmap file of any resolution I want. And hopefully, um, you know, hopefully that's useful um, to you out there, and I hope you got something out of it.